Okay, there we go. Now I'm not muted. That's a lot better because now you can hear me. Um, I was mentioning that uh, somebody in, in the live chat said that they're from Amsterdam, which is cool because the Geerling family, which I'm part of, is also from the Netherlands originally. <coughs> and um, another note that I should say is that this is the second time in a row that I forgot to unmute myself when I started the live stream. I even had a note on my desk saying, unmute yourself before you start. Uh, so anyways, now that you can hear me, uh, we can get started. I'm excited to talk about the Compute Module 4 today and uh, the I.O. board and some of the new things, and especially to, to talk about my use case, which I usually do a lot of clustering and uh, um, computing with higher speed storage and things like that, but also answering some questions. Uh, somebody says even Upton is Jason Statham. That's kind of funny because that, that was the first thought that went into my head the first time that I saw him too. Um, <clears throat> Anyways, uh, the other thing that I mentioned when I was muted and talking to myself was that uh, I had a very early morning this morning, so my throat might be a little bit crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's a seven-hour time difference, I think. We're like minus 600 in Britain, in London right now is plus one. So <clears throat> early morning, a little tired. I got my, my caffeine here. And uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get started today. I have three cameras uh, going. I have my Pi Cam over here, and uh, you might you might be wondering. I guess it's called the Pi Cam because it's showing the uh, Compute Module Four, and here's a Pi Four, so it's showing a lot of Raspberry Pi things. But it's also a Pi Cam in the sense that whoops, that's not the right one. It's also a Pi Cam in the sense that it's actually a Raspberry Pi that is running as a webcam right now. Uh, so let me get back to there. So. Uh, I'll be doing a video on that project later. A lot of other people have done this before, but I tried to make it so that there's a project that's actually really easy to use. And, um, and you don't have to... A lot of the people that write about this, uh, they, they put all these commands and things that assume that you know everything about hardware level hacking and things like that and, and how to set up different USB modes on the Pi. And I just wanted to take a Raspberry Pi Zero and take a camera, the HQ camera, and make a webcam, and make it so I can plug it into my computer and start using it as a webcam. And here you can see it's working. Uh, the latency is pretty close. It's maybe a, a quarter second or so. So latency is a tiny bit off. If you're going to use it for streaming or something, you'd have to make, some, make a few adjustments to your audio probably. Uh, but it's, it's pretty darn good. And I've used it with my, uh, my Dell laptop and my Mac, and actually with another Raspberry Pi, and it works great there too. Um, so, uh, uh, one question I've seen like three people ask already is, uh, can you use PoE to power this uh, I.O. board? And yes, uh, it has the circuit in it that you don't need a hat, um, at least, it's, so I haven't actually tried it. Uh, it. It has a hat in it that, or it, it doesn't have a hat, it has, it has the power circuit in it so that you can use it for uh, PoE. Somebody says Dr. Pepper doesn't have caffeine. I can tell you right now that it has, uh, you probably can't see that, 41 milligrams per 12 fluid ounces. It's not as much as a Red Bull, but it's enough for me to get started in the morning. So yeah, Dr. Pepper definitely has caffeine. So a couple things that I wanted to talk about too. A lot of people, so I have to admit that I, you know, believe it or not, I don't know everything. And I, I especially don't know a ton about GPUs and uh, how they work with PCIe. Um, <clears throat> but uh, a, a lot of people are saying it doesn't matter that it's just a 1x slot. You can actually put a 16x card into a 1x slot using an expander or adapter or <laughs> even hacksawing the, the slot so that you can physically slide the 16x uh, uh, card into it. And that technically is possible there are two big problems. Like I said in my earlier video, the drivers have to support Linux and ARM. And uh, additionally, a lot of those larger video cards, especially like, I don't know if you saw in, in the video that I did, that uh, giant RTX 3080, it has a fan on it. It has a lot of circuits on it that use a lot of power. Um, GPUs can use up to 75 watts of power, which you know, in the old days, we had these 75 watt light bulbs and those things got really hot. Uh, so that's a lot of power to go through, and on this board, it's going to put through, it, it doesn't put through a ton of power to that PCIe slot. Uh, so you're going to have to be a little bit careful. 
um, if you want to plug anything in that uses a lot of power. And ideally, you'd find a way to power it externally. I think there's ways to do that, but um, you'd have to definitely be, be careful. Like I mentioned in the video earlier, the uh, hard drives that you use, I don't have one on me, but um, if it's a spinning hard drive that requires a little motor to power it up and things, those hard drives use a lot more power than an SSD usually. Even SSDs can sometimes use too much power, and that can cause flakiness on your Raspberry Pi itself. Um, I'm going to quit my mail app just so that I don't have any weird things happen. And uh, yeah. So uh, let's see. Another couple things I wanted to talk about was um, temperature. And somebody's mentioning drink G Fuel. I, I don't want to have a buzz from this. I just want to stay awake. You know, that, that's my point. And uh, JD, who uh, knows the family, mentions, do all Gearlings like Red Bull? I do not like Red Bull. There are, some, there are some drinks that if I drink them, I get kind of a buzz and I just can't concentrate. One of them is Coke Zero. I have no idea why. And the other one is Red Bull. And I'm guessing a lot of the other energy drinks. Anyways, uh, so talking about thermals, the uh, Pi Compute Module 4, um, and I'm going to move the microphone over a little bit closer so that I can... So that I can, uh, you can still hear me when I move over here. The Compute Module 4 has uh, the exact same system on a chip as the Pi 4. And I did a video uh, a few months ago on why, let's see. So that the old Pi 4 case is the same kind of design as this is a 3D, 3B+. Plus, but it's, it's just a completely enclosed case with almost no ventilation gaps at all. There's just little areas where the slots are. Um, and so in my video, I, I tested that and I found that basically it turns into a little easy bake oven for your Raspberry Pi and that's no good for thermals. Uh, it causes performance issues. So um, for the Pi 4, I, I hacked in a little fan, a little 5 volt fan that you can plug into the GPIO and uh, leech off of its power supply. And this is an okay solution. It's a little bit loud and annoying, uh, but it works and it keeps it cool. If, if you just use it in the open like this, uh, there's really no issue with thermals. Uh, I haven't had this or the uh, compute module uh, have any overheating issues when it was just out and about like this. Uh, but if you put it in an enclo enclosure, that's when you really have to worry about the heat. So for the Pi 4, I typically use these Flerk cases. Um, it's, the case is basically a giant aluminum heat sink. And uh, this is one of my test bench pies, so I always have it in that case. Over on the other side of my room, I have my um, web server pie that's running, if you go to pydramble.com, uh, it's also in a flirt case. Sometimes I run pydramble.com off the actual pydramble, it's a cluster of four Raspberry Pi 4s, uh, but other times I don't. Um, somebody's asking about the night bot. I don't have any bots in this channel, sorry. But if you do want to send me a super chat, I would be very much appreciative of that. Um, you might even get a call out. <coughs> So anyways, thermals, I wouldn't worry so much if you're going to use this for testing and things, but if you're building an enclosure for it, if you're building something like a camera that it's all encased, you do need to worry about the thermal issues just like you would with the, Pi, the regular Pi 4. Um, uh, a heat sink might or might not help, but the key is with anything thermal, just like if I'm quiet, you might hear the fan going in the background. That's my MacBook Pro. Apple is always walks this fine edge of trying to make things super quiet and super thin versus thermally efficient so that they actually get the right performance. And I, it looks like uh, OBS isn't killing my CPU yet, but uh, that's the problem is Apple kind of builds the, these enclosures for the computers that don't have enough ventilation, don't have enough heat pipes and heat sinks and things, and then you don't get as much performance out of them because they throttle. So the same thing can happen with your Pi. So if you're taking this, this uh, compute module and sticking it into a cool enclosure for whatever project you're building, uh, you have to worry about things like Wi-Fi signal and all that, but um, you also have to worry about um, making sure that heat can go from inside to outside. And there are different ways to do that. So someone asked just now about uh, whether it has uh, PWM or pulse, pulse width modulation. And um, I do say that it does. And I actually have here, uh, let me get this out. You can't see it right now, uh, but I have a, a Noctua fan. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong because I pronounce everything wrong. But anyway, I have this fan. It's, it's a four pin fan connector fan and you can plug it right in and I'll do this over here. Sorry if it's harder to hear me when I'm over on this side. 
Uh, but you can plug it into the fan connector and I'll pop one of these pies in here just to show you. Like that. Let me actually make this full screen so you can see what's going on. So they got the fan connector. Uh, the fan is over here. It's about to suck in this Raspberry Pi, so I'm going to move it over here. Um, and it's going to blow all the stuff that's on my desk out of the way, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this Pi, and it, it, it does offer pulse width modulation. There's a chip. Um, there's a chip, and you can see the fan kind of does its little preboot thing. And now it's blowing. It's actually blowing this way. Um, there's a chip that's right there. It's kind of hard to see. But that chip is, um, it lets you interface with the fan connector over uh, I, I squared C or I2C. I like saying I2C just because it's easier to say. I know some people give me flack for it. But I can pronounce things however I want. It's my YouTube channel. Anyways, um, you can interface with that over I2C and control the fan, uh, change the, uh, change the uh, uh, RPMs. Ch you can change the speed settings for how it ramps up and down and things like that. I actually haven't gotten too far into that yet. Um, I, I might do a follow-up video where I talk more about it, uh, but you can see it on the bus. There is a, an interesting difference from previous pies, and I don't know if the documentation has been updated. Let me move, move things around on my desk so I can get back here. Um, now I'm getting very cold because this fan is blowing a lot of air. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. Uh, so anyway, that's the fan, uh, and since I have the Pi booting up, uh, I'm going to go go back over here to the three cam and say sudo fing. I don't know what the IP address of this is, so I'm going to find it really quick. You can find out everything else on that net network too. Uh, clear. All right. Apparently, I had just flashed this earlier. All right, so here's the Pi, and we can say, uh, uh, actually, to see it, hold on. To see it, you have to enable the I2C, um, the I2C interface. However, it's not on the standard one. So normally, if you wanted to enable I2C, you'd say sudo raspy config, and you'd go into interfacing and go to I2C and enable it. But this is just for the uh, GPIO pins on, on the header uh, here. And... And the problem is that the, the S2C or uh, the connections inside on the board are on a different bus. So I'm going to go out of here, finish. And to, to enable that, you got to go sudo uh, nano. And yes, I'm using nano right now. I use vim, nano, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Whatever makes you productive. Config.txt. And uh, where is it? So it, you can see it enabled I2C here. Uh, but I'm going to say dt param equals uh, i2c vc equals on. And it's funny because this is vc is for video core. So I know that for some pies and maybe even this one, it, it's also used for um, integration with video core, the processor on the, the GPU. But uh, it, this is also the bus where you can find uh, the onboard stuff. Like there's the real time clock over here, this little chip. Uh, which has a battery backup so you can have uh, the, the time be persistent on your Pi uh, and have timers and things like that. And the little fan chip. And I think, I don't remember if there's any other devices. I think it's just those two. Uh, but if you do this and let's see, save that. Um, also, I had, when I was testing this, I had to disable uh, audio. I don't know exactly why that was, but um, so I'm going to reboot and we'll log in and we'll see it. I know it's I square C, I, but when I say it, I like it's I squared C, and that's just a lot longer to say than I2C, and I write it I2C anyways, because it's really annoying to try to write superscript online. Um, here, let's see, while that's rebooting, I'm gonna come over here and check chat. Uh, someone also asked, will the Turing Pi have cooling? Uh, that's a good question. I would imagine so. I, uh, let, me, let me open up a, a browser window here. And we'll take a quick look. Uh, Twitter, Turing Pi. Uh, so Turing Pi, uh, for those who don't know, Turing Pi made a cluster board. And I, I did a lot of work with it. Uh, and I put all my stuff on GitHub, Gearling Guy, Turing Pi cluster. 
so this repository has all the software that I was testing on my Turing Pi. This is the V1. This is actually a prototype. The V1 looks a little bit different, uh, but it could put seven compute module three plus or older compute modules. It uses the dim form factor. So they already said on Twitter this morning that they're going to be building a new model for CM4, and they're also going to make a case. Now, an interesting thing I saw in this picture is there's four LEDs on the front. So outside of other things, I'm wondering if that means because of the new form factor, maybe there will be four compute modules on this new board because it's harder to mount them uh, in a very condensed format like they did with the Turing Pi V1. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. I, I keep forgetting. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can see it. Sometimes I forget that I have the little the little video over here and the video over here, and then I put things right under them, and I'm talking about them, and everybody's like, hey, I can't see it. Um, so let's see. Uh, that's probably rebooted, so let's log into it. I should probably just copy. I'm going to copy my uh, key over here. Oh, there's a super chat. Thank you very much. Um, if I end up doing another one, Compatibility, yeah, I, I probably will get a couple network cards because uh, that's one thing. I didn't test network cards and I didn't test SATA adapters uh, with hard drives. So those are two things I really want to test besides GPU. GPU, I don't really care about it for myself, but it seems like everyone in the world is like, oh, does this mean I can play whatever PC video game? It's like, well, first of all, the game doesn't work on Linux. Second of all, the card doesn't work on Linux. So. <clears throat> but it would be interesting to see how far we can get towards uh, having another another GPU on the Pi. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, so RAS, this is still the default password. So if you hack into my home network, you can log into this Pi. But uh, it's not like I'm using it for anything in production right now. Um, all right. So if I say, uh, oh, what am I looking for now? Um, I think this, oh, it doesn't have, I, so to interact with I2C or I2C, you have to uh, install the right packages. So you have tools like I2 detect or I2C detect. Uh, so I'm going to say sudo apt get install dash y I2C tools. That gives me the tools to integrate or to interact with it. Yeah. And uh, Astro 7525 says the game probably also doesn't even work on ARM. All right. So it is installed. Um, I wonder if that's out of the box now, or if maybe I installed this before. Uh, so now I'm going to say I2C detect dash Y, and it's on bus 10. Uh, and you can see there's uh, a, a device here, here, and here. I don't know which one is the fan. Last night was when I found out about this little fan control. I was like, there's a fan pin there. there there's a four pin fan plug. I wonder how to control this thing. So it was a couple nights ago. And I just haven't had time to play around with it too much. Um, and I was having trouble until I uh, realized to, that I had to disable the audio. Um, I was having trouble even getting this to recognize anything. What it was doing was giving me uh, this, just a blank grid. And I'm like, well, in the specs, it says that there's a chip there. So there should be something. And I wasn't seeing the real-time clock either. Uh, but this is bus 1. There's nothing on it right now. But um, bus 10 is where uh, the onboard devices are. And again, that was, uh, I don't want to exit, uh, config, no, boot, config. Uh, so that was where this guy is. Uh, put that in boot config reboot, and you can see it. And uh, like I said, I might do a video talking more about that later at some point. Um, this is more of a live, like, here's what you can do. And as I said, I don't know everything, and a lot of people on the live chat and watching this know more than me and can, can get a lot further than me. Uh, let's see. Um, some people are talking about trim and things. Uh, let me pop back over here. Uh, the camera display ports, do they have I2C or I squared C? Sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, the Pi cam is blocking a little bit of the terminal. Sorry about that. Let me, let me make sure that I don't have that because uh, sometimes when I type a command there, you might not see it. Uh, whoops. It's been a while since I've been doing live streaming regularly, so my monitors are kind of a mess. Sorry about that. Um, any other good questions? ZFS host. Yeah, so uh, talking about NAS, a, a lot of people have talked about um, using the CM4 as a NAS. Uh, one thing that I think would be cool to see is basically a little stack of uh, drives, whether it's NVMe or um, 
SSDs or something with uh, SATA connectors, just having a stack. And I, I know there was a NAS, I think it was four drives and a Pi 4 on top, uh, but it was a little bit clunky and it, was, it, didn't, it wasn't in stock for very long, unfortunately. So it would be cool if there was something where you literally just have that stack of drives and then a little uh, Pi 4 stuck on top of it on a little carrier card and a couple network jacks in the back and, um, and you could use it as a NAS. Some people were asking about uh, 2.5 giga, uh, gigabit networking using USB 3, something like that. And it might be possible. I, I think that we'd be hitting bus limitations at that point. And uh, e even with faster networking, uh, it seems like the, um, for some reason, the networking stack in the Pi itself couldn't put through in, in any of the testing that I was doing. I tried with SMB and NFS and uh, just SCP, just copying encrypted files over the network over SSH. And I always was hitting a wall around 70 to 75 megabytes per second, which is what, like 700 megabits or I don't know, 800 megabits. So you're gonna hit a wall at some point, and, uh, but, but it is something that I'd like to test a little more of. Like I said earlier, I, I'll probably get a couple network cards. Um, somebody asked a very general question about how did I get into computer science? Uh, for me and for a lot of people in the field, it's, it's mostly, I did a lot of fun things with computers as a kid. And uh, like my dad would bring home computer parts and he'd said, if you can build them, you have a computer. So I remember distinctly when I was like 10 or 11 or something like that, getting the first, uh, I had a 386 that I scrapped together with like eight megabytes of RAM or something crazy like that. And from then on, I, I just experimented with software, experimented with hardware, and started learning some things a little more systematically. And uh, really in, in my world, I started with uh, web development and design and then got into other things like, uh, like Raspberry Pis when they came out and started learning a little more Python because it was already integrated with everything. I started using Ansible, which Ansible used Python. Um, Anyway, uh, someone is asking about something. So the EMMC, yeah, this, oops, that's not it. Let me, so this is another thing I mentioned in the video. When you, when you want to disconnect these things, um, I should probably shut it down before I disconnect it. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Um, let me shut this down. And, all right, wait for the little light to blink there, which means it's shutting down. You can't see it, but... Yeah, it was blinking, trust me. Um, and then I'm going to switch over to the Pi Cam full screen. Let me move this fan out of the way. Uh, so I mentioned in the video that uh, the board-to-board the -board connectors, these little 100-pin these, um, connectors, uh, typically I've seen them on flex cables where you, you kind of like pull up on one side or use a spudger. This is not a spudger. Don't use this on a motherboard. Uh, but you kind of pop it up like that, and, and it pops off easily. And you have two of them, and I'm sorry about the uh, sounds upstairs. One of my kids must be clopping around like Santa Claus or something. Um, but when you want to unplug it, you grab it, and um, I, I usually do it this way with my fingers here kind of holding it down, and then I pull up, and that way it doesn't fly off. But the first time I did this, so here I'll plug it back in. first time I did this, I went like this, and it kind of just pops out. That's probably not the safest thing for a little computer uh, to be making it fly around like that. So, um, uh, but anyway, somebody was asking about if the EMMC is soldered on. Yes, it is. Uh, you can see it's right here at the top. Uh, there's the backside. Uh, it is soldered on, so you're not gonna be replacing that unless you wanna do like hot work reflow. The, the EMMC they use is pretty reliable, uh, pretty good. I wouldn't have any qualms about putting it into an embedded use case. Uh, especially if you're not doing huge amounts of heavy writing. And if you are, I would consider using some other uh, type of memory for that, like an external uh, SSD or NVMe drive or something like that. But, uh, but it is reliable. And also a lot of people talk about how like micro SD is super unreliable. Here's, here's the card that I use for like 99% of my testing. I've actually had this card for four, four or five years used it probably at least two or three times a week for hours on end and done tons of writes and tons of things with it. Um, and uh, I, I haven't really had any problems with it. I, th I think the bigger problems that I've seen with people with micro SD and EMMC and pretty much any storage is power issues. If you don't supply enough power, 
then you're going to have flaky power that that will um, cause the cause the Pi to kind of write bad data and cause flaky flaky storage issues and all kinds of weird things. I've never tried Elixir nerves, no. And somebody gave me Huff 400. I don't know exactly what currency that is, but thank you. Um, someone I'm sure will will send that to me. And like I said, I, I have a lot of delay. I, I usually set this to low latency for these streams, but this one is high. So it's like 35 seconds before I say something and it's on the stream. So if I don't respond to something you say immediately, that's why. There's like at least a 60 second loop here before, before I can respond to anything you say. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, someone is asking if I can uh, put the boat bootloader on the uh, EMMC and then the rest of the system on an NVMe. So if I could do if I could do something like this, let me uh, let me pop this out of here. So I'm getting out the 970. So if I could pop this in here, oops, I have the screw in here. So NVMe drives are not as quick to connect and disconnect um, as uh, as SATA drives and things like that. They're made to be a little bit more permanent install um, and secure. So let's see, I'll put this in. So could you do something like this and have it have it boot off the EMMC, just the bootloader, and then switch over to the NVMe for the system? And uh, I believe that's possible. I haven't tried it and uh, on the live stream. I, I don't think we have time to go through and, and try it, especially if it doesn't work and we spend 30 minutes just debugging it. Uh, but that is something worth trying, and uh, I might, excuse me, I might... Uh, I might try that and talk about it in a video later. I'm really hoping, though, that they, they support USB boot, or not US, uh, support NVMe boot, just like they support uh, USB boot, which, as I mentioned earlier, uh, USB boot already works with the uh, built-in USB ports or with a USB 3 card, which I have somewhere in here. But, um, but I did test that with the Corsair, uh, as well as I, I put the same NVMe drive that's in here, the 970, I popped that into this USB adapter, uh, which has the chip on it, uh, which is, let's see, this is a uh, RTL9210, I think. Um, this chip is actually a little faster than the chip that was in the TDBT enclosure that I tested uh, a few months ago in one of my videos. So if you want to get the fastest USB 3 speeds, uh, get this chip which is a little bit newer than, uh, what is it again, RTL9210. And uh, I was getting a little bit better performance with this, with the same drives. Uh, so you can boot this drive in here completely with no onboard storage. You could use the light module with no micro SD card. Uh, but I would really like to be able to boot um, straight with NVMe because if you didn't see in the, uh, I'll bring it up here. Uh, if you skipped over that section of the video, or if you haven't seen that video, um, I'll just go to my website where I have the review. Um, the NVMe performance was just crazy good compared to anything else. Uh, for random I.O., which f for my needs, like I, I do uh, websites and I do databases and things like that on these pies. So the random I.O. is the most important speed for me. And you can see that the EMMC is already way better than microSD, which is awesome. Um, and USB SSDs and NVMe drives over USB are way better than EMMC, and NVMe is way better than all that by twice the amount, uh, especially for writes. So it'd be really cool if we can just run the whole thing off of there, especially if, uh, if there's a new Turing Pi cluster and I could have my databases and things on there and boot them all off of there. You could probably boot the, boot the whole cluster in 10 or 15 seconds. Um, and another person's asking about PoE uh, without the hat. Let me, you know what, since enough people have asked me, I'm going to go grab my PoE hub and uh, plug it in and see, because I think that that's the case. Uh, but I will, I will double check that now and make sure that that's the case. So hold on a second.
here and I'll switch to my my other camera so you can see what I'm doing uh, this guy so I have my my hard case with my high Dremel cluster in it back in the before times back when we could still do things in the world I used to travel with this thing and do demos and, and live Kubernetes cluster work uh, on the Pi cluster. But nowadays that's just not happening. So it's been in this case a lot. Um, so I'm going to plug in this PoE hub and see, see if it'll provide power to the I.O. board. And we'll prove it one way or the other. So let's see. Network jack. And I need to plug in the PoE hub it's, or the switch. Right. Ooh, don't drop the power supply. It's probably not the best thing for it. So I'm plugging in my little net gear. So this is the that's the GS305P. Uh, this is the little switch that I use. Uh, the main reason I use it is cost. Four ports with PoE, it's like 45 bucks. If you go to eight ports, it's like 80 bucks. So it kind of scales linearly. So it's nice not to pay a ton of money uh, for your, your little PoE switch, especially when you're talking about cheaper pies. Uh, so I'm going to grab another network cable. You can also get PoE injectors, uh, where it just injects the power in line. Uh, but I don't have one of those on me, so I'm just using this. So let's see if this is going to boot it. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working, so maybe, maybe you do need the PoE hat. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to say conclusively that that didn't do it, because maybe there's also a jumper I need to put on that I don't know about. Because um, there is J9. So the, the thing is that um, the, uh, the Pi 4 also has the same. Uh, here, I need to switch my cameras to this guy. So the Pi 4 has the same set of uh, jumpers for PoE, and the way that that works is I don't know if I have one on hand. Um, these are, this is my Pi Dramble cluster. Uh, this is the PoE hat on top of it. And it uses those pins. You can't really see it, and I'm not going to spend 30 minutes taking this apart. Um, but it uses those pins to supply the power. So I'm guessing that you still need the PoE hat right here. Uh, I'm not going to say 100% that's true, but that's what it looks like. I thought that the circuit was built in on the board, but it looks like it's the case that you still need the PoE hat to be able to do PoE direct off the board, which makes sense. Um, it saves it saves some money, and I don't see a transformer anywhere on here, so. Yeah, that was, um, <laughs> smoke says it doesn't. Yeah, there's no smoke, so that's good. It's not even hot. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and unplug this thing and uh, get it back, uh, get it back out of here. You know, uh, whoops. I'm confusing my cables now at this point. Uh, let's go back here. So, uh, we, we took a look at PoE. Let's look at what, anything else. What's that smell? Yeah, I haven't, I've never had blue smoke come out of a computer, but I have had uh, plenty of different types of smoke. The last thing, though, that smoked on me was my, um, which drill was it? I think it was a, a um, what is it, Mikata or what? Makita. I had a Makita drill that I was doing uh, a bunch of uh, uh, holes into concrete wall. And then I started doing holes through studs for power. And uh, it just started spewing out smoke. There's actually a, a funny uh, video from a couple weeks ago on AVE on YouTube, if, if you follow him or if you want to look it up, uh, where he had a couple drills do that. Um, they, lose, they lost their chooch factor or something like that. And they were smoking quite a bit. So that, that happened to me. And there's a distinct smell with that. If you ever smell that coming out of a pie, that's pretty bad because the pie doesn't have that much material to begin with, and it's not a motor. So it shouldn't be doing that. Um, okay, let me take a glance at anything else here really quick. Um, can you plug your Netgear switch into your PC and share the internet connection with the Pies? Uh, yes, 
Well, it depends on if your computer can share its internet connection through another interface. So I've done that a lot of times. What I would do is I would have the Pis be wired only, especially before they had Wi-Fi built in. So the Pi 2, was it the 3B? <clears throat> Let me take a glance here really quick. Uh, was it? Oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Pi 2 and Pi 3 didn't have Wi-Fi built in. So when I had the cluster that I would take around, this Raspberry Pi cluster, it only had wired networking. And actually, this was a, a fun thing that I discovered was um, Kubernetes will have some issues if you don't have a clock running. And I didn't have a real-time clock on the cluster. So uh, I had to find a way to get the internet to the cluster that was wired in a place where usually there was no wired network connection. There was Wi-Fi. So I would uh, connect to Wi-Fi on my Mac, and then I would use internet sharing on the Mac, which I, I believe you can do that on Windows too. Um, and I don't know how it works on Linux. I know you can, I just don't know if there's a simple utility for it. But I would share that Wi-Fi connection through the wired network, and then the, the Raspberry Pis had a set of uh, hard-coded IP addresses that would look to the Mac and get their internet. Electronic components work on smoke. If it escapes, they stop working, yes. Um, yeah, but it, if they escape, you know that something's not great. I the the first that first computer I had when I was uh, ten or eleven, it was the 386. I remember one time I I was uh, messing around just to see what would happen when you plug different wires into different places. Because with that computer, there were a lot of there were a lot of these headers on the board that had just pins, and there were a lot of like two or three three uh, connector plugs. I forget what type they were. But I would just like try them in different spaces. And one time I did it and a big spark came out and then some smoke and I quickly shut it down and that motherboard was ruined. So yeah, careful. And uh, yes, we do have a covert ABE fan here. I uh, love watching those videos. Uh, which compute module boards will you be ordering? So for me, I have already ordered this morning uh, two four gig RAM, 32 gig EMMC boards. And the reason I didn't do the eight gig RAM, it's partly because of cost. Um, I didn't wanna pay the, the price for that, um, save a little money. But also uh, most of the things that I've done on the Pi can use four gigs of RAM comfortably. But I, once you get to more than that of RAM, usually the thing is needing more CPU. And the Pi, the Pi 4 is pretty fast, but when you compare it to like even my Mac mini that's over in the corner that has a Intel i5, it's a lot slower um, per clock cycle than something like that because this is this is a mobile chip made for mobile devices mainly and it, it just doesn't have the power it's not like apple's a series chips uh, it doesn't have that power to to pump through bits quite as fast so um, i stick with the four gig models i do have my eight gig that i use for testing over here uh, this is also the pi that i used in the video where i tried to replace my mac with a raspberry pi Sorry for the fact that it's a little bit clickbaity and stuff, but it is, it, it's interesting. I, I'd never actually tried doing that before because none of the other pies were even close to being able to, to handle a workload that I would need during a day. That one did a pretty good job. I, I could do my work. It's just a little bit painful. Um, some of it because of process issues, but a lot of it because uh, things on Linux are often not as polished or as, as easy to implement as things on Mac. Um, and I, I'm sure that I just offended at least 30 people watching this. Uh, the, somebody's asking about the compute module. Uh, the compute module is this little part right here. Uh, it pops off, and this is the compute module with EMMC, which is that little black part right there, that little, uh, that little chip. And this is the light version that doesn't have it. They also make a light version that doesn't have Wi-Fi. This little silver thing is a little protector over the Wi-Fi chips. And another thing that was uh, cool to see on this board is the fact that it has an external antenna jack. So if you're building this into a metal box or putting it inside a Faraday cage where the RF can't escape and it won't get a wireless connection, you can actually buy a, uh, a wireless antenna from Raspberry Pi that's certified for use with this. And you can integrate that into your project. Um, this, this is not something that the FCC would necessarily smile upon, but you can use any antenna. This is a cheap antenna that I've had for years uh, for um, a couple other Wi-Fi projects. I used to have a little netbook that I put Wi-Fi into it, and so I popped this little antenna onto it and uh, got it to work not very well. That, that uh, netbook was in very bad condition when I bought it. 
it's in a little bit better condition when I got rid of it. Um, but anyway, so th there's that antenna port uh, that you can plug into and get a better signal from. Uh, so when you have the EMMC uh, uh, compute module on the board, it's going to boot off EMMC unless you put a little uh, jumper on these pins. This is, this is on J2, uh, the first two pins. This is going to tell it uh, to boot into USB slave mode or mass storage mode where you can plug this jack into your computer. This is a micro USB connector. Plug that into your computer and then you download the Raspberry Pi uh, RPi boot software. And, uh, or it's called USB boot, I think. And um, if you want, I can demonstrate that in a minute too. Someone asked if there are any cases for the compute module for, uh, not that I saw yet. I mean, it was just announced today and usually people that do cases uh, would, would need a little more lead time. Uh, but there are four mounting holes here that are evenly spaced, and I believe the Pi Foundation has, I know they have a KiCad model for the Pi, the compute module itself, I think. I don't know if they have a KiCad model for the I.O. board, but I think they might. And if they do, you can get the measurements for that, and you could 3D print a case, uh, you could machine a case, you could take acrylic and drill holes in those places and build something. I've been thinking about... Um, uh, taking some of my M2 uh, spacers, and uh, when I get my extra compute modules, I might uh, build them up a little bit and, and build a little cluster of these. The one difficulty here is this PCIe slot. Uh, most cards, like this one, sticks up a ton. It, it's like, you can see if I turn this sideways, it sticks up way out of there. Um, you can get risers for these that you can mount somewhere else to have, like you could mount it so that you have the plug here. Uh, or here, that might stick out a little bit. Um, uh, or another option is if you build your own board, you could have, instead of having a PCIe slot, you could just put in uh, an M2 slot on your board and have this mounted somewhere on there. And that's, that's what I'm guessing and I'm hoping will happen with the Turing Pi cluster. They could have uh, the compute modules and then they could also have one or two or I don't know how many M2 slots that would be connected to different Pis and you could, you could boot them that way. Uh, yeah, so let's see. There's a couple other things here. So a close-up of the I.O. dev board. Let me see. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, let me switch back over here. I have this, uh, the Pi Cam is literally a Pi Cam. I'm not even joking. That is a Raspberry Pi using the HQ camera module. The project for that is uh, on GitHub. Uh, Gearling guy, uh, what is it? Pi webcam. Yeah, so Pi Webcam, you can go here and grab the project. Uh, it has all the instructions for installing it. It's a teeny tiny bit rough, and I have it doing 720p by default. So if I hold this up, um, well, first of all, because it's the HQ camera, I have to focus it, uh, which I have it locked right now, so I'm not going to change that focus. So what I'm going to do is I will switch it over to Logitech Cam full screen. Here we go. So this, you might be able to see a little bit better. There we go because this little camera has autofocus, which is a nice thing to have when you're doing live demonstrations. So here's the board, and you can see here's the Ethernet. Um, I was trying to do PoE, but I now looking a little closely, I don't see any power circuit there that, it, that is going to do PoE built in. So you're, you are going to have to use a PoE hat if you want to do this board with PoE, um, which isn't bad. The PoE hat, I think, is another 25 bucks, but it's, uh, come on, focus. Focus. You can do it. Focus. Nope. Not going to focus. All right. So anyway, you can see this nice blurry image. Um, if I go over here, this one might focus a little bit better. Yeah, that's a little nicer. Okay. So anyway, uh, if you get the PoE hat, it, it's kind of death by a thousand paper cuts, though, at some point. And at some point, it becomes cheaper just to build your own board uh, because you, you can get custom PCBs printed in quantities of five or ten. I know I've looked at uh, PC, PCB Way in the past. There's a couple other ones too that you can look at. Um, and you could build your own board that just has the features that you need. Like if you're going to just use the EMMC version, there's no need to have a micro SD card slot. So you save a little space and money there. You could power it uh, direct. Uh, you wouldn't need the 12 volt barrel plug. Um, so a lot of different things you can do. And, and another interesting thing on the back of here. So a lot of boards nowadays, like I don't know if you've ever seen a... Um, 
an iPhone um, iPhone motherboard. It's just cram packed full of chips everywhere on the front, the back. Uh, it's sandwiched like three or four layers. Uh, this I/O board has absolutely nothing on the back, just all the soldering pads. So uh, it's an interesting design decision. I kind of like it because when you're when you're developing with one of these, you want to see everything that's going on, and you can trace every wire to every pin. Uh, that's how I I I was looking at the fan connector. And I'm like, hey, what's this chip? And then I was like, oh, you can control the fan. This is cool. It has a built-in little little uh, BWM module. So uh, you can see how the RTC integrates and all that kind of stuff. So that's a cool feature of this board. I, that's one thing I do like about it. Even though in the video I did complain a little bit that it's big. Um, the old, this is not the official Pi. I'm on the wrong thing here. This is not the official Pi, uh, Pi IO board, but it's a similar size. So you can see the new one is a bit bigger. Uh, the footprint is a bit bigger. But it's, it is nice to have all those breakouts available. And uh, just for comparison, again, if you haven't seen <coughs> the video earlier, this is the 3 Plus on the right. That's the dim form factor. And that's the 4 on the left. And here's the back sides of both. And my 3 Plus has uh, EMMC. And on the 3 Plus, the EMMC was actually on the back side as well as the RAM. Whoops. There we go. It's hard to do this and be close to the microphone still. So yeah, there's the 3 Plus and the 4. <clears throat> You've had enough chips. Yeah. I just bought some extra chips yesterday because our we've reached the point in our family, I have three kids, and we've reached the point where now a large bag of chips is usually a one meal affair, which is incredible to me. Like I just I remember I would have bags of chips that I would buy and they would just be there until they expired and then I'd throw them away. Because I just couldn't eat that many chips. Now usually it's like one meal, they're all done. Uh, someone asks if there is a dim form factor. So one of these for the four, and there is not. Uh, there, there might be some way that somebody could hack together a little like carrier card that would be this connector, but have uh, a mount for this guy. Um, I haven't seen anybody talking about that, but that's a physical possibility. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Um, <clears throat> But uh, the, the, there were a few different reasons the Pi Foundation went to these board-to-board -board connectors. And one good thing about it is now they have separated all the high-speed lines. I forget which side it's on. I think the high-speed lines might be over here. And the GPIO and power and things are over here. Uh, but that lets you separate your board and do the traces and things in a more efficient manner. Or at least so I've heard. Uh, I am not a PCB designer by any means. I have made a few PCBs, but they're very bad. <laughs> they worked. That's about as much as I can say for them. Uh, but that is that. Is that. Uh, let's see, anything else here? Uh, is it safe to say the CPU is the Pi's weak point? Um, I mean, this is it's computers. Computers always, like... I remember when the first iPhone came out, I, I thought it was fast, and the second one, and it was fast, third one. Every, every iPhone and every new Android generation, every new Intel generation, and now these, the, the AMD chips that have like 3 million cores in them, it's always, CPU is always going to get a lot faster. We're running into some of the laws of physics nowadays, but um, I think we're, we're going to see a faster CPU at some point. I wouldn't say it's the weak point for the Pi 4. The Pi 4 is the first Pi that I felt it's not really like, oh, I have to do this on the Pi. It's going to take forever. The Pi 4 is fast enough that I, I don't have that feeling as much anymore. Um, so, yeah. Uh, someone's mentioning GPIO 3.3 volt. There's actually a little resistor that you can move. Uh, let me switch cameras here so you can see this, uh, that camera. Someday I might have enough. If, if you want to support me on Patreon or GitHub, I might be able to afford one of those little OBS Stream Deck things or Elgato. Or I don't know what it is. Anyway, I've seen some people with these cool things where you press a button and it switches cameras. Right now what I do is I switch screens, go to OBS, and click on the scene. And I know there's keyboard shortcuts and stuff. But anyways, um, I might get one of those Stream Deck things sometime. But there is a resistor that you can switch the voltage for the GPIO. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. So see, right by my finger, there's that little itty bitty resistor. You might not be able to see it because I can't hold this thing perfectly steady because my arm is way out there. But that says, um, 
it's by default it's soldered in the spot for 3.3 volt, but you can switch it to 1.8 volt. Uh, there's also another cool little feature that I, I didn't notice this until a couple days ago. So <clears throat> the compute module mounts like this on the board. Eh, there we go. And you can see that little triangle at the top. That is the antenna that's built into the PCB, which impressed me because how can an antenna that's just inside of this sandwich PCB be almost as good as an external antenna mounted in a way that's closer and, and uh, orient, orientated, oriented uh, better towards the, the router. I don't know how that's possible, but it is. And uh, it's, it's a pretty good little antenna. Anyways, so when you put this on the board, what if you mount the board and it's facing the, uh, <coughs> the router, it's gonna block all that signal because of the ground plane on the board, all this, all this uh, dead area is a ground plane, which is, if, uh, if you saw my video, where did I put that thing? Is this it? Yeah. If you saw my video, I, I actually hacksawed into this Raspberry Pi focus. There we go. You can see that little divot in the top. Uh, you can't really tell from here, but there's actually a, a layer of gold, a little bit of uh, conductive layer in there on the ground plane of the board inside the PCB, and that's gonna block the wireless signal. So what the Pi Foundation did was they put, they put an area on the PCB, if it focuses, right where that Wi-Fi is, you can see that lighter green area where there's no uh, metal in the board so that the signal from here can go through there if you mount the board in a way that uh, the Wi-Fi is gonna go through there. So pretty cool little design, design, de design. I can't say it. <clears throat> Just like uh, if you go back to that video that I posted this morning, look at the bloopers. I can't pronounce the word pronunciation. Right now I can't pronounce the word design. Well, I just did it, I guess. Anyway, so that was a cool little thing. I, that's one thing that I like about uh, all these pie boards. The engineers who build these things, and I just realized I'm not on the right camera again. There we go. The engineers who build these things, uh, you can see in, in the way that it's laid out uh, some consideration for people who are trying to figure out what it's doing. There's always good labels. The traces are easy to follow. The way that they design it so all the circuits are on the top so you can kind of see what's going on. I just like that stuff. That's, that's another reason I've enjoyed using uh, the Pi Foundation or the Pi Raspberry Pi Trading LTD uh, products over some of the other products which aren't labeled as well and aren't thought out quite as well, aren't engineered quite as well. Um, for example, this board here uh, which is, it's a, it's a good little board and it, it's nice and cheap, which is cool. But this one has circuits on both sides. And uh, one, one time I accidentally screwed up the EMMC on a Compute Module 3. And I found out that I had to pull a resistor uh, somewhere in here. One of these resistors, I forget which one, uh, to be able to rewrite the EMMC. And it was so hard trying to figure out, you had to like go from this side, look where the pin is going, flip it over find here, find which pin on this chip it was, and then trace it, and keep tracing it all the way back to one of these plugs. Uh, it's a lot easier when you have everything on top of the board like this, so. Just an interesting engineering decision that was made that I enjoy. Uh, let me put this, this guy back away. All right, anything else? Words are hard, yes. Words are very hard. Cooling solutions, uh, yes. So I, I mentioned that earlier in the video and I'll mention it quickly again. So I, I have this uh, Noctua fan that has a four pin fan connector. By default, if you just plug in a fan, it's gonna turn on full speed, it'll get 12 volts. Uh, but there is a fan chip in here. I'll use this handy dandy little pointer screwdriver. There's a chip right here uh, that's a pulse width modulation fan controller. Uh, I forget what the spec is on that, but um, you can find it in the CM4 IO uh, specifications. And it's controllable over the S squared C bus. I'm still going to say S two C a lot. So if you don't like me saying that, too bad for you. Um, but you can control that, and you can make it so that the fan ramps up when it's hotter and ramps down when it's cooler. Uh, but like I said, with the Pi four itself, if you just operate in an, in open air and the ambient temperature is not terrible, like in my office right now, it's 72 degrees. Um, it's not going to overheat even under load. Uh, but if you if you put it in a case. Uh, like the Raspberry Pi 4 case here, it's going to turn into a little easy bake pie oven and bake that chip to the point where it's going to throttle. So if you put it in a case, you're going to need something like a fan or at least a good heat sink with some way for that heat to go 
uh, into the case and come out with a hot side. So that's up to you to figure out uh, if you're going to build a compute module for. Uh, let's see. Does it prevent you from connecting it the wrong way around? Let me check. I actually I haven't tried that. Uh, let's see. So this is the right way, like this. If I do it the wrong way, if I don't damage my board. No, you can do it the wrong way. <laughs> I wouldn't power it up that way, but uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Something good to know. The uh, it's symmetrical, so you know it'd be interesting if they had put a little something something somewhere to make it so that you couldn't do it the wrong way. But they do have a little a little uh, line traced out on the board that shows uh, where to put it, and they have the mounting holes as well through the PCB. So you'd have to not be thinking too much to do it that way, but you could. So that is that is an interesting point. It, It'd be interesting if they put uh, some sort of little stopper in the design of the board that, that made it so that you can't, uh, you can't plug it in the wrong way. So, yeah, interesting. We'll see if anybody uh, breaks their pie and starts complaining on the pie forms about that. Uh, someone's also asking about the Sopine cluster board. And if you haven't seen that before, uh, cluster board. Uh, Pine 64 makes a cluster board that's very similar to the Turing Pi cluster board that I'm familiar with. And it uses the, what is it, the so, so, pine, so pine modules, which are similar to compute modules. It has similar limitations to the compute module 3. And uh, it, it's also, the board has a lot of little differences that made it not as appealing to me. But it, it is, it's a nice little board, and it's very similar, like I said, to the Turing Pi with the older compute module. It's not going to give you the performance that you're, you're going to get out of the compute module 4, though. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like a lot of the things this, that the Pine64 group is doing. They have a lot of interesting little uh, devices that use ARM processors as well. So definite shout out to them as well. Uh, someone said, I have a website. I, I do have a website. And it's jeffgearling.com. And I post a lot of stuff there. Like, if you don't like my video content, go to my blog. And I, some people just basically take the video content and paste it on their blog, or vice versa. They write a blog post and then read it into a video. It's it's kind of dumb because it doesn't really help me. Because people that that uh, I don't know, it, you don't make a lot of money off blogging, and you don't make any money off video that much either. Uh, it's it's mostly around the things that you learn from it and how you can apply those to other projects that that can help you earn a living, but uh, blogging is not as popular as I, as it was when I was starting out in computing. But I still love reading other people's blogs, and I love when they get into depth in something. So I for my blog posts, I always spend more time editing, uh, making sure the you know it's better for the written format, and I have more illustrations usually in the blog post than I can fit in a video. Although with a video, you can see things move around and, and how they interact. But anyway, uh, check out my blog. You can subscribe to RSS because RSS is awesome and free and wonderful and free of ads. And I think I have a full RSS feed in there too, so you don't have to click through to see my post. But yeah, there's my website. It runs on Drupal, and I had a series earlier this year on upgrading that website from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, um, someone mentioned stacking, like how are the different ways of mounting these? If you wanted to have a cluster board or something, I'm thinking that there are two ways that you could do it. You, one is you could have like, uh, you could have them in series, but you'd have to route the signals in a good way. But you could have them in series like this and this and another one like that. But you could only fit a few on a board. Um, it'd be interesting to see if somebody built like a 1U server with like 30 or 40 of these. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but cooling is an issue. You got to move the air over them to get the air, the hot air, out of there. Um, another option is to have like a, like a daughter card type situation, just like with the NVMe here. Uh, you could have uh, some sort of interface with the board that mounts this vertically. Um, obviously, not an NVMe adapter. You can't plug a Pi into an NVMe adapter, but. Uh, some sort of custom daughter card that you could use on the board. I don't know what they're going to do with the Turing Pi. 
I, I think that they're still in those planning stages, but I, I have talked to them about it a little bit and they said that they're gonna definitely get this thing going and they're gonna have a case for it too, which is awesome because if they can build a case that has a custom, um, a custom design that can have a, a slot for a fan or something, that'd be really cool. Because uh, with the Pi 4 inside a case, it is definitely going to overheat if you have no cooling at all. Uh, Pinebook Pro, yeah, it's a nice. R RSSians represent. I have, I mean, since I started on the internet, that's how I get my news. I, I subscribe to probably three or 400 RSS feeds. And if a site doesn't have one, I'm not going to follow it. I'm not going to like go to a website every day or sign up for a silly emailing list. Uh, ribbon cables, yeah, cooling. If you stacked them on top of each other, you'd, you'd, I don't know how you'd get the heat out of there. You'd have to have like liquid cooling or something. How old am I? I am above the age of 20 and below the age of 100. Uh, how does my website run on a pie cluster? Go ahead and check out piedramble.com. That is running in my basement about five feet away from me. I'll show you in just a second, piedramble. Whoops, I'm on the wrong screen, so you can't see anything I'm doing. So this is the Pi Dramble I mentioned earlier. This is the actual, wait, I can't see myself, so I don't know what you're seeing. So this is the Pi Dramble itself. It's in a case right now, uh, not running, mostly because the little fans on these PoE boards are kind of whiny and high-pitched and a little bit annoying, and they, they do need to run to keep it cool. Um, but right now, if I switch my camera, you're gonna see my nice, wonderful, messy office here. Uh, way over in that back corner. I don't know if you can see it yeah, right there. That is another one of these. Let's see. That's another one of these, uh, a Flerk case with a Pi 4. That has a Pi 4 4 gig model. And that is running pydramble.com and a few other little utilities that I have running uh, for web related things. And if, you, if you're tuning in later in the stream, you might notice that I have a Pi Cam here. That is a pi cam. I could call it a pi two, a pi squared C cam because there are two things going on. It's a camera that's taking a picture of pies, but it's also a Raspberry Pi webcam, and you can get the code for that on GitHub. Uh, Gearling guy, pi webcam. Another project that I uh, and here's the code for it and stuff. I'll do a video on that soon. Um, Another project that I slapped together really quickly, uh, slapped because it's called Pi Bell Slapper, is this wonderful little automated Pi Bell Slapper. And it's the worst looking contraption ever, but it was a cool little project that I did for a local uh, non nonprofit charity uh, that does uh, some radio for their online donations. It would ding a bell whenever they got an online donation. So fun little projects you can do. And these are the kind of things where I think the compute module could do some cool, interesting things uh, for that particular project. Uh, group, I, I also wanted to integrate some other features. If I could just build a custom PCB built into the base of that bell uh, that just had one of these stuck on it, that that's kind of a cool idea. Because um, you could build some really compact projects that have a full-fledged computer that can run full Linux on it and do it pretty decently too. Pretty power efficient too. Uh, somebody likes the Pi Cam mount. Yeah, so I don't do a lot of videos on like, oops, that's the wrong camera. Like I said, someday, if you want to support me on Patreon or GitHub, I can uh, afford the wonderful little things to make these streams better. So I have, uh, it's just a gooseneck. that It's like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. It's not great. It, it's terrible for bigger cameras, but it's perfect for the Pi Cam because it's so, so lightweight. Um, I just plug it in and, and you move the gooseneck in whatever way that you want. And you get a nice picture overhead so that you can show here. And uh, th the other thing I like about the Pi webcam is that CS mount lets me put whatever lens on it that I want. It's not autofocus, so that's a little annoying um, because sometimes you do want to like, grab something, hold it up close, and then you have to sit there focusing it, and that's no fun. Whereas with, I think with my Logitech camera, it's supposed to autofocus. There you go. See, it autofocuses. And with my, <coughs> my beefy A6000, it autofocuses as well. So... When you're like me and you don't have a camera crew in your basement, that's what you do. Ice tower compatibility. <clears throat> it is not compatible with this Pi, unless they build a new one um, and build it just for the cluster, the IO, or not the cluster, the IO board, uh, because the ice tower actually uses these, uh, these mounting points, which would be over here. 
and that'd be kind of useless because you don't need to cool an empty PCB. You need to cool the, the, seat, the system on a chip. Firewall and DDDNS. Um, I, I don't have a firewall. I just shoot port 80 right at that thing. So if you want to try hacking into it, you probably can get into it after a certain amount of time. Uh, but I do have it somewhat isolated on my network. And all it is running is Docker. So if you do hack into it, I can just rebuild it in about 10 minutes. Uh, and gigabit network, cluster board networking. That is interesting. If you, if you could have a cluster board with a 10 gig uplink, you could get, and let's say you have four or five, six, I don't know how many compute modules, you could get um, many gigabits through it and do something like a Ceph cluster or some sort of storage cluster that would pipe through a lot more data. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Raspberry Pi likes the camera too. Thank you. Yeah. I, the high quality camera is definitely, I have so many little projects that I'm working on. One is some astrophotography things that I'm going to try. One thing that I really want to do with it is get it to do some computational photography. Basically like take a bunch of frames and then do all the work in the pie and then output a, uh, an actual image of the stars or something. The other thing that's nice is, so I have my Sony a6000, which is kind of heavy and then my Nikon, I have a D750 and D700, which are massive cameras compared to all these other small cameras. And to put them onto an Astro Tracker type thing, you got to buy like expensive motors and mounts, or you can buy like a thousand or two thousand dollar mount that does the the sky tracking. But with a Pi, the, with this teeny tiny, uh, go back over here, with the uh, little teeny tiny Pi and some lens that you might use, I'd probably use a different lens or mount it to my telescope or something. Um, the telescope, you go back to that problem of, of, of a heavy lens though, you could get, um, you could get a smaller motor and, and build your own little sky tracker that doesn't really need that much power at all. So a lot of possibilities here. Let's see. <laughs> well, I don't know if I could answer techie questions about the Raspberry Pi better than Raspberry Pi itself, but, uh, yeah. Um, that's another, so the Raspberry Pi Foundation does actually have a blog with RSS. And as I said, if you don't have RSS, I'm not going to follow you. So, um, Raspberry Pi, uh, where is it? If I go to blog, I think they have a link. Yeah, right at the top. So kudos to them. Let's keep the web awesome. Everybody provide RSS feeds. Uh, Daniel Day says, did I dodge a bullet not buying a Turing Pi? Uh, I, I still enjoyed my time at the Turing Pi. I don't have one right now. I'm actually waiting on a shipment from the second batch that they're doing. Um, but I, it's, it's still so much fun, e even with slower computers. And, and sometimes even it can be better with a slower computer. So the CM3 Plus is, like I said, about half the speed with, uh, with the CPU for a lot of things. And it's the EMMC is half the speed of the EMMC on the CM4. So it's, it, it's, it is slower, but sometimes that offers opportunities. Like I can see, oh, wow, I had no idea that this code that I wrote over here is, is doing this super duper slow thing that relies on disk access. I could cache that and make the thing faster. And it's way faster on the CM3 plus, but it's also going to be faster on the CM4 or even on cloud servers that might have uh, storage over the network or something. So that's one thing that I've liked a lot about using pies and you know a lot of people are always talking about how they're underpowered and things like that and that can be an advantage because you can realize when you write functions in your code that are o to n or something like that it, look up big o notation uh, you can you can rewrite things to make them way faster especially on older devices and you know sometimes i'm i'm using internet from my phone that's in a rural location or something and you end up downloading a large huge javascript file and then the javascript takes like five minutes to run on a slower computer or something there are a lot of people in the world that don't have bleeding edge like i have an i9 chip in this laptop and it's it's able to do this live stream the cpu is not falling over there are a lot of people that use 10 15 year old computers still and when they get to your website if it's going to take 30 minutes to load, they're not going to wait there and load, wait for the whole thing to load. So I, I do find using uh, slower Raspberry Pis, uh, even the older generations, I still have. So I have my stack. This is my Pi stack here, um, which I can't see because I'm holding it, but I hope you can see it. Uh, I still have the original Pi, the 2B, 3B, 3B+, and I still run some things on it. Mostly, sometimes it's just to see if it still runs <laughs> with 120 megs of RAM. Um, I have a couple A pluses over there and a couple zeros, 
Uh, but also because if you can run something on that small of memory, you know it's going to run like even way better on a brand new Pi 4 or on my laptop. So that's one thing that I really dislike about uh, a lot of modern applications and things. When, when your application requires like three or four gigs of RAM just to display a chat window, I think that's kind of ridiculous. Um, anyways, I'll stop my rant there, uh, stop talking about uh, Electron apps and things like that. Uh, but anything else here? Let me look over here. Anything else here? Nope. Um, so I think uh, it's it's been over an hour, and my throat is about to die, uh, mostly because I haven't had uh, my full allotment of caffeine and water for the morning. Um, but somebody's asking about why their Pi Zero W is laggy. One reason for that, well, there's two reasons. One is if the uh, network connection is bad if you're using wireless. The other one is the Pi Zero W is pretty slow. Like, it's slower than the Pi 2B, uh, which is also pretty slow. Um, the chip on it's, it's, it's older. So, it's, like, I'm using, I'm using, here, let's see. Switch back to this guy. So I'm using the Pi Zero W up here. And uh, the reason I'm using it is because it's so tiny and, and uh, I have, like, three or four of them. And this one I can just strap onto that lens and keep it there forever. Um, it's, it's not going to pump through a lot of bits, like, I have it set at 720p, so if I switch to this guy, this is 720p resolution at 30 frames per second, and there's very little lag. So um, you can use it as a webcam at that resolution. You can do 1080p, but at 1080p there's a little bit more lag, and sometimes it drops frames and things. So when you're using that old of a Pi, you're just going to run into some of those issues. Uh, thanks for the stream. Yeah, Have I made a, what, a Ponagachi? No, I have not made one of those. I'm guessing that it's something that helps you to, to do some white hat hacking type stuff, but I have not done that. Uh, a laptop, I, I think a CM4 would make a great fit, especially, so it'd be really cool if the Pi Foundation or the Pi Trading Company can make a CM4, CM5, CM6, since it has these new board to board connectors, if it could keep that design, it'd be cool to have a laptop where you could kind of pop the core out and pop in a new one like that. Um, It'd be really cool to have a tiny netbook style laptop like that. Um, and, and I know there's the Pinebook and things like that. So I actually have over in the side of my office here a Crow Pi 2, which I have not uh, done as much work with yet that I would like to. So I will probably be doing a couple more videos on that too. So uh, as I said, my throat is about to blow up and I'm going to uh, direct you to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a nice beautiful button for that below if you're on YouTube or on uh, the app. If you're watching this after the fact, I will try to add a uh, table of contents to this video, although I kind of went all over the place, so we'll see if, if I can get that done. Um, and you can follow me on, you can sponsor me on GitHub, on Patreon. Man, it's been a long time since I do this, so I don't even know where to put my finger. And you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and elsewhere at Guy. Um, and also go, go check out the raspberrypi.org website, which has a lot more information about the compute module and IO board. Check out my website, jeffgreeling.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I have this wonderful end screen to part ways with you today. <laughs>